What's going on and welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since we've done a video on the channel. We've mostly been doing live streams, which have been a lot of fun, but I wanted to get a video out there ahead of Game Week 26, talk about my transfers and my team selection plans as well. Drop a like on the video if you haven't done so already. Subscribe as well if you're new around here, and let's get into the team selection video for Game Week 26. Starting off in goals, David De Gea with the clean sheet in the game against Brighton. No clean sheet against Southampton, but happy with the 10 points in a double game week. In defense, Trent Alexander-Arnold with the clean sheet. Dawson comes in off the bench for Cancelo. If you follow me over on Twitter, you would have seen that I was debating whether I should start Dawson over one of my Watford strikers. In the end, I decided to play the Watford strikers and there were some rumors that Cancelo would miss out. And I just thought if Cancelo is going to miss out, Dawson would come off the bench. Leicester City are really vulnerable from set pieces. They've conceded the most goals from set pieces in the league so far this season. And Dawson, he's a threat from set pieces. I was checking the scores in that Leicester West Ham game. I noticed that Leicester were winning 2-1. I kind of switched it off. I thought, ah, oh, that's a shame. Dawson with just a blank and the one point. And then I checked back in later and I saw that Dawson got himself a goal in stoppage time to get the seven points off the bench. A little bit of jam, but you love to see that. And then Luke Dean with the blank. Aston Villa have been disappointing recently, hoping that Gerard can turn things around. In midfield, I did bring Rafinha in for Madison. The thinking behind that is that Rafinha has the double game week in 26, and he also plays in game week 30. Madison is someone that I'm looking at bringing in around game week 28 or 29. He does play game week 30. Right now, my plan is to not play any chips through game week 30. Just try and navigate game week 30 with transfers because I just don't think that there's enough upside to go with a free hit in game week 30. So that was the thinking behind bringing in Rafinha in. I thought that Everton were quite vulnerable as well. Defensively, they haven't looked too strong. I thought that Leeds could score some goals in that game. They're fresh off a 3-3 draw with Aston Villa. And so I was hoping that Rafinha might be able to get a return. But just a one point, he was hooked at half time as well, which is pretty concerning. Although I'm confident that he plays in the double game week against Manchester United and Liverpool. One point for Rafinha. Madison made things worse by getting an assist. It was a pretty jammy assist. Takes the corner and then Creswell's handball means that it's a penalty and he gets the assist for that. But that's okay. Happy to have Rafinha in the team. At his price, I still don't think there are many better players in the league around that price value. Jared Bowen, Again, this guy just continues to perform. The points that you gain from him are fairly negligible, though. Most people have him jotted with the one point. And then Bruno, my captain. Captain, oh, captain. That was probably one of the highlights of the season, watching the Manchester United versus Brighton game. I don't have Ronaldo in my team. Ronaldo scores. Bruno's on the yellow card. And I'm looking at a red arrow. And then in the 97th minute, Bruno goes and scores a goal. It wasn't assisted by Ronaldo as well to get a huge haul, 24 points, and he outscores Ronaldo. Absolutely incredible scenes. If you had Bruno and you didn't have Ronaldo, that was a great moment. And for all you Ronaldo captains out there, I'm sure that was a bitter pill to swallow to see Bruno get the last minute goal and then to get all three bonus as well. And then up front, blanks from all my forwards. I'm starting to lose patience with Ollie Watkins, he does play game week 30 though, so I'm just going to keep holding on to him for now. The Watford boys blank yet again, and then on the bench, Rudiger and Saka obviously without a game, and Cancelo was rested in the game against Norwich, so I had no coverage on the bench. In the end, a total of 69 points, which is fairly decent, enough to see me get a green arrow up to 380k and 1470 total points. Okay, before we have a look at my transfer plans and my team selection for game week 26, I just want to have a look at some of the predicted points for defenders, midfielders, and forwards, and hopefully that helps you make your own transfer decisions, which players you want to be targeting for game week 26 and for the next four game weeks. So on screen, we've got the players sorted by expected points in game week 26, and it's unsurprising that Liverpool and Arsenal defenders are out on top. Liverpool and Arsenal have the best double game week fixtures in game week 26. Liverpool, of course, playing Norwich and Leeds and Arsenal playing Wolves and Brentford. For me personally, I've already got Trent Alexander-Arnold. Salah will be coming into the team and I do have Jota. There's a bit of an injury cloud around Jota at the moment. Robertson is a good shout. You can see he comes close to Trent 
for expected points and points per game in the next four fixtures. But I'm really looking at some of the Arsenal defenders there. One of the transfers I'm looking at making this game week is to bring Ramsdale in as my goalkeeper. But I think the effective ownership for the Arsenal defense will be quite high. Having a second Arsenal defender might be a good way to try and get ahead. So at the moment, I'm eyeing off Gabriel Tini and White. Gabriel and Tini lead the way. Tini is probably the player that I look to bring in. He comes really close to Gabriel in terms of expected points this game week, but he just outscores him for points per game across the next four. There's a little bit of a saving on going with Tierney over Gabriel, but Gabriel is such a threat from set pieces. So if you fancy Gabriel, Arsenal to score a set piece in one of the upcoming matches, maybe you go for Gabriel, but I just like going for Tierney for that attacking upside as the wing back. Ben White, if you can't stretch to Tierney or Gabriel, I think Ben White is a pretty safe option. In midfield, everyone will have Salah. Most managers already have Jota in their team. We do know that Jota suffered a bit of an injury in the Champions League game against Inter Milan. So if you've got Jota in your team and you're a bit concerned that he's not going to play the double game week, maybe he's a transfer that you're wanting to make anyway. You could go to a midfielder like Son. Mane is a good shout, but Son is expected to outscore Mane across the next four game weeks. So I'd prefer to go for Son as my Jota replacement than to spend a little bit more and go for Mane. Saka is probably the best Arsenal midfielder and maybe even the best Arsenal attacker to go for this double game week. You just need to remember that if you go big on Arsenal and Liverpool, they of course blank in 27. So you need to know if you've got three Liverpool players and you've got two Arsenal players, then you're going to be without five players in game week 27. You can only bench three meaning you might need to play a free hit or play with a few players down in 27. Wilfred Zaha isn't a bad shout from Crystal Palace, and then Rafinha is there as well. It's a tough double for Rafinha. I don't know if I'd be bringing him into my team, but if you've got him in your team, I certainly think he's a hold. Up front, Lacazette is someone who stands out in terms of expected points this game week and even across the next four. He's someone that I'm really thinking about bringing into the team. I've got Dennis and King. And I am thinking about bringing in Lacazette. I just don't know if I can justify a minus four for Lacazette when King and Dennis are playing in a double game week. Yes, King and Dennis have been disappointing recently, but even if they just get appearance points in a double game week, a minus four to bring Lacazette in, I just don't know if it's worth it. If you're someone who has Ronaldo in your team, I think Lacazette is a fantastic option to bring in. Just depends on your plans for game week 27. Harry Kane is a decent shout as well. I just don't think the premium forwards are worth it right now. I think the money is better spent in midfield. And Raul Jimenez as well. He doubles in 26, but he also plays in game week 30. So if you're trying to get through game week 30 without a free hit, I think Raul Jimenez is a great buy up front. All right, having a look at my team for game week 26 and the potential transfers that I'm looking at making, the first move is to bring Aaron Ramsdale into the team. I'm looking at taking a minus eight this game week. Aaron Ramsdale is very likely to come in. I think he's got the highest points potential of any goalkeeper this game week, and he looks good across the next four game weeks. If you can get through game week 27, if you've got a sub goalkeeper, or you plan to use the free hit. He's got Brentford and Wolves at home. I think there's a every chance of a clean sheet in both of those games for Ramsdale. His effective ownership is going to be so high as well. So any Arsenal clean sheet, he's going to get bonus points and he's going to hurt your overall rank. So Aaron Ramsdale is very likely to come in either for David De Gea or for my backup goalkeeper, Jed Steer. In defense, Trent Alexander-Arnold gets the vice captaincy. He's at home to Norwich, and then he's playing Leeds as well. Tierney is a player that I really like. I'm not sure whether it'll be Tierney or Gabriel just yet. If the deadline was right now, I would be going for Tierney over Gabriel. It's nice to have that double Arsenal defense. I do think they've got a great chance of a clean sheet in at least one of those games, and I am playing Cancelo right now. I just think that... He's had his rest in the game against Norwich. I don't think he will be rested in the game against Tottenham. City know that Liverpool are chasing them in the league and they don't want to give up the lead that they've got. So I can see Cancelo playing in that game and there's every chance they keep a clean sheet against Spurs. In midfield, we've got Rafinha who's got a double. Bowen with a single game, but at home to Newcastle, it doesn't get much better than that from an attacking point of view. We've got Jota at the moment. 
Salah, he will be my triple captain. So at this stage, I'm not going to be bench boosting. I'm very likely to play triple captain on Mo Salah. I just don't think there's a better triple captain opportunity than playing Norwich and Leeds at home. I think that game week 36 will present itself as an equally good, if not better, bench boost opportunity. I've got the wild card to come. And I just don't think that triple captain gets much better than Mo Salah against Norwich and Leeds at home. And then I've got Saka. I've held on to Saka this whole time. He's been a fantastic asset for me, and he's got Brentford and Wolves at home. So I think Saka is nailed on in that Arsenal attack, and I think he can do well in the double game week. Up front, we've got the Watford boys, Josh King and Emmanuel Dennis. Would I like to transfer these guys out? Most definitely. But they're playing in a double game week, and I just don't think I can sell them now. This will probably be their last hurrah. Crystal Palace at home, I think, is a good fixture. Roy Hodgson obviously used to manage Palace, so maybe there's a bit of extra incentive there for Watford to get the win. And time is running out for Watford. They haven't scored a goal under Roy Hodgson yet. I'm not expecting big points from either of these guys. If I was going to sell one, I'd probably sell Josh King before Dennis. But I'm hoping that they can get maybe just one attacking return between them in the double game week. I'm not asking for much, but I'm happy to hold them for the double. And that means on the bench, we've got Luca Dean playing Watford. Antonio Rudiger, who's got a fixture against Crystal Palace. And then Watkins. I think that Watkins will be benched in the game against Watford for Danny Ings. And Watkins hasn't looked good recently. So... I've got Watkins on the bench and then Jed Steer at the moment as my backup goalkeeper. I could play De Gea on the bench and transfer Ramsdale in for Steer. I just need to think more about the future funds and the future moves I want to make and whether I need that little bit of extra cash. And so going De Gea to Ramsdale might allow me to do a move later down the line that I won't be able to do if I was to have two premium goalkeepers. So that's the team for game week 26. I'm looking at taking a minus eight. Ramsdale's locked and coming into the team. Salah comes in for Bruno. If you can get to Salah and keep hold of Bruno, I think that's a good move. Bruno will do well in the game against Leeds, but Ramsdale comes in for either De Gea or Steer. Salah comes in for Bruno, and then I'm looking at bringing Kiarantini or Gabriel in for Dawson. That gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine double game week players. Bowen with a fantastic single game week fixture and Cancelo there. I don't want to bench Cancelo. So nine double game week players, triple captain, very likely to be on Mo Salah. Let me know in the comments below, how many double game week players will you have for game week 26? What transfers are you looking at making as well? Make sure that you give the video a like and subscribe if you're new around here. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. <music>